let us start the chapter p block as you can see this is my notes and this is class 11 p block and this thing is class 12 p block this and and small part over here let us start so talking about class 11 p block first of all the introduction part see uh, this is the configuration of group 13 14 and 15 group the you know bo uh, box shaped uh, structures over here which represents the Represents that in the nitrogen family, all of them are half filled, and its configuration is NH to NP one to six. And the order of ionization over here is delta I H one is less than delta I H two is less than delta I H three. Now the chemical properties. This is a planar group BCl three. BCl three is planar which reacts with NH three to give tetrahedral compound. That is be, uh, BCl three, and even ammonia is attached to that. Uh, and you can write it as B uh, NH3 BCl3. The activity with acids and alkalates. Aluminium dissolves in dilute HCl and liberates dihydrogen. This is the reaction. 2 Al to solid plus 2 uh, 6 HCl equus gives 2 Al 3 plus equus plus 6 Al Cl minus equus plus 3 H2 gaseous. However, concentrated nitric acid renders aluminium passive, passive by forming a protective oxide layer on the surface. Aluminium is amphoteric in nature. Aluminium also reacts with aqueous alkali and liberates dihydrogen. This is the reaction that is 2 Al whole 2 Al solid plus 2 NaOH aqueous plus 6 uh, H2O liquid gives 2 Na plus of AlOH4 minus aqueous plus 3 H2 gaseous that is sodium tetrahydroxo aluminate 3. Now the next topic is important compounds of boron that is BF3 plus NH3 with the lone pair gives uh, this one this uh, I hope you know what is this this is dative bond that is uh, NH3 BF3 borax borax is white crystalline uh, compound uh, and its formula is Na2B4O7 dot 10 h 20 now Na2B4O7 plus 7 h 20 gives 2 NaOH plus 4 uh, H3BO3 on heating borax first loses water okay on heating borax and this compound is orthoboric acid on heating borax first loses water molecule and swells up and on further heating it solidifies into ga uh, glass like material known as borax bead and this is the reaction that is Na2B4O7 10, uh, dot 10 h 20 when you heat it forms Na2B4O7 that is uh, sodium metaborate which on heating gives 2 NaBO2 plus B2O3 that is boric anhydride now orthoboric acid that is N2B4O7 plus 2 HCl plus 5 h 2 gives 2 NaCl plus 4 BOH trice or H3BO3 boric acid is a weak monobasic acid it is not a uh, sotonic acid but it acts as Lewis acid by exciting electron from hydroxyl ion. Now the reaction is this that is uh, BOH trice plus 2 HO, HOH that is H2O uh, which gives BOH4 uh, minus plus H3O plus hydronium ion. And you can also write BOH trice as uh, H3BO3. HCBO3 when you heat gives HPO2 which when you heat further gives B2O3. Now the next topic is bonding in diborin which is also known as banana bond. As you can see here this uh, the structure of hydrogen is in the shape of a banana so it's known as banana bond. That is BH BH6 B2H6 structure of B2H6. Now what is syngas and producer gas? Mixture of carbon monoxide and uh, water is known as syngas or water gas and is prepared by passing steam over hot coke and this is the reaction that is uh, carbon or also solid carbon which is also called coke which reacts with uh, water which is in gaseous state in this temperature to give CO carbon monoxide gaseous plus H2 gaseous is formed and this is known as water gas the mixture of H2 and uh, this one water gas when air is used instead of steam a mixture of CO and N2 is produced which is called producer gas here yeah, carbon solid plus O2 gaseous plus 4N2 gaseous gives 2 CO plus uh, 4N2 and this mixture of this is known as producer gas. 
and even here it's not H2 it's CO and H2 okay now silica and silicones in normal form is non reactive because uh, SiO bond has very high bond enthalpy and strong bond and that is silica or uh, what I told just now is about silica and what about silicones that is R2 SiO R2 SiO is a uh, is the represent repeating unit this is a repeating unit okay now what about silicates and silicone again the same thing silicates and this is silica and silicon this is silicates and silicones SiO4 4 minus Si silicon is in plus for oxidation state and here the same repeating unit SiO with R2 that is SiO N which is hydrophobic and water repellent now what is zeolite now to know about zeolite just consider ZSM5 and here the ZSM5 is a type of zeolite okay now it is used to convert alcohols directly into gasoline. Hydrated zeolites are used as ion exchangers in softening of hard water. Now let us start class 12th P block, which is very important. Let's discuss this. First of all, the introduction part. See, minus C plus 3 and first plus 5 are the common oxidation states of this P block elements. And the stability of plus 5 oxidation state decreases and plus 5 sorry plus 5 decreases and plus 3 increases due to inert pair effect down the group now anomalous properties of nitrogen unique ability to form p pi p pi multiple bonds with itself and other elements and it's having small size and high electronegative vt example carbon and oxygen heavy elements of the group do not perform p pi b pi bond as atomic orbitals are large and diffuse uh, and you know diffuse and so, so they cannot have an effective overlapping and phosphorus arsenic antimony form single bonds as p p a s a s and s b s s b s b while bismuth forms metallic bonds in elemental state single n n bond is weaker than single p p bond because of higher interatomic repulsion interelectronic repulsion of non bonding electrons owing to small bond length nitrogen cannot form d pi p pi bond as heavier elements can phosphorus and arsenic can form d pi d pi bond Reactivity towards oxygen. See, all these elements form two types of oxide that is E2O3 and E2O5. And reactivity towards halogen, what happens is that elements react to form two series of halides that is EX3 and EX5. And reactivity with metals, all these elements react with metals to form binary compounds which exhibit minus three oxidation state. Now let us study the properties of dinitrogen. See, first of all, thermal decomposition of ammonium dichromate. This is ammonium dichromate and when you heat it forms nitrogen plus 4H2O plus chromite. Now the thermal decomposition of sodium or barium azide. See, first of all you need to know what is an azide group. Azide group is N3 minus. So this is barium azide heated forms barium and N2, 3N2 and 2 NaN3 that is sodium azide forms this. And how do you know what it forms? That is Na plus and N3 minus. This is azide and this is sodium. And you react from Na and 3. Now when they combine, form. If you take this example, sodium azide. They combine. And I hope you know how to find oxidation state. If you don't know, then write in the comment section and I'll prepare another video on redox reaction. Now preparation of ammonia. See, this is the structure of the kind of mechanism for to which ammonia is prepared see in this machine what happens is that it's also called Haber's process ammonia is prepared by Haber's process now hydrogen and nitrogen are passed from different sides and they are added to a compressor at 20 megapascal pressure and they go over here and this is the catalyst iron oxide plus potassium chromate at 700, kel uh, 700 Kelvin they go here and this is the reaction which you need to remember that N2 plus 3 H2 gives at equilibrium NH3 and it forms liquid ammonia which goes over here N2 plus H2 pump and again the cycle starts repeating and uh, ammonia is prepared now all the you know the side products or byproducts properties of ammonia copper ion and it's blue of course plus 4 NH3 ammonia 
Aqueous gives deep blue. Co ammonia copper, copper aluminate. Two plus. And this is Ag. Ag is silver, which is colorless, which reacts with chloride and to form silver chloride. That's white precipitate. And silver chloride, which white precipitate, reacts with ammonia, which is aqueous to form ammonium nitrate. Uh, ammonium, ammonium or uh, silver or uh, alum. Uh, this one ammon, ammonium <laughs> silver ammoninate, which is colorless compound and chloride. Silver ammoninate chloride. It's a very difficult name to remember because it's not in an state. Now oxides of nitrogen. Di nitrogen. Uh, you need to know all these oxides. That is uh, di nitrogen oxide, nitrogen monoxide, and these are the oxidation state. Di nitrogen oxide N two plus one, nitrogen monoxide N O plus two, di nitrogen trioxide plus three, nitrogen dioxide which is brown gas plus 4 dinitrogen tetroxide plus 4 and dinitrogen pentoxide is plus 5 ok now the prop let's study the properties of nitric acid 2 copper plus 8 nitric acid that is to dilute use 3 copper nitrate plus 2 NO plus 4 H2O now copper plus 4 nitric acid that is concentrated gives copper nitrate plus 2NO2 plus 2H2 and 4 zinc plus 10 nitric acid dilute gives 4 zinc nitrate plus 5H2O plus NO2 and zinc plus 4 nitric acid concentrated gives zinc nitrate plus 2H2O plus 2NO2 now add in plus 10 nitric acid gives 2 HIO3 plus 10 NO2 plus 4H2O. Now brown zinc test which is an important test and it is a test which is done for the confirmation of nitrate and you see here in the reaction nitrate is added. So we are confirming whether the nitrate is present or not and how do we confirm? This product that is C nitrate is actually the name of a ring and this ring is formed actually and uh, when that ring is formed you get to know whether nitrate is present or not and it is also called as penta aqua nitroso ferrous sulfate and nitrate plus 3 ferrous or ion plus 4 H plus ion gives nitrous oxide plus 3 Fe3 3 plus ion this is 3 Fe2 plus that's 3 uh, Fe3 plus ion plus 2 H2O and iron oxide not iron oxide iron hydroxide Fe H2O6 2 plus plus NO gives FeH2O5 NO2 plus ion plus H2. Now moving to the next topic that is allotropic forms of phosphorus. See, first of all you need to remember this reaction that is phosphorus is P4 represented as P4 and this is 3 NaOH plus 3 H2O gives phosphine plus sodium hypophosphite this one and the two allotropic forms are white phosphorus and red phosphorus this is white phosphorus and it breaks while heating which means that it is unstable this compound 60 degree angle and four compounds now red phosphorus this does not break while heating which means it's stable of course it's it is supposed to be stable as you can see it's a mixture of compounds and the kind of way it is arranged Topic is phosphorus halide. So phosphorus halide is also known as phosphorus pentachloride, and this is structure. And when you heat it, form PCl3 uh, plus Cl2. In solid state, PCl5 exists as this PCl4 plus and into PCl6 minus. Now let's study oxa. Which are the oxo acids of phosphorus? First one is ortho phosphoric acid that is this and its oxidation is state is plus 5 and its formula is H3PO4 and this is its structure and pyrophosphoric acid oxidation state plus 5 H4P2O7 and this is its structure and cyclo trimetaphosphoric acid HPO3 whole of 3 plus 5 oxidation state and this is its structure and polymetaphosphoric acid and the formula is HPO3N plus 5 oxidation state and disease structure and the small ones over here that is orthophosphorus acid and it's also known as phosphenic acid 
phosphenic acid yeah and hcpo3 plus the oxidation state and this is hypophosphorous acid that is that's also see this is phosphonic acid and this is phosphenic acid hcpo2 plus one oxidation state and this is structure now the reaction h uh, 4 h3po3 gives 3 h3po4 plus ph3 and this is disproportionation reaction now let's study the simple oxides that is al2o3 solid plus 6 hcl aqueous plus 9 h2o liquid gives 2 al h2o6 pl 3 plus aqueous plus 6 cl minus aqueous near 2 o 3 solid plus 6 naoh aqueous plus 3 h2 liquid gives 2 na3 al oh6 aqueous now ozone ozone is thermodynamically unstable that is o3 gives o2 plus o and this is the structure of ozone it exists in equilibrium no allotropic forms of sulfur uh, you see sulfur has two allotropic form one is crown shaped and another one is chair shaped see this is a set a set ring is a crown shaped structure which is present in both rhombic sulfur that is alpha sulfur and monoclinic sulfur that is beta sulfur and this chair shaped structure is a six form now let's study how sulfuric acid is manufactured it's manufactured by contact process first step is burning of sulfur see this is the diagram of that and yeah i'll explain this to you with the help of the diagram see first step is burning of sulfur yeah sulfur this is sulfur burner first let me explain you the process okay first is burning of sulfur ores in air to generate so2 conversion of so2 to so3 by reaction with oxygen in presence of catalyst that is vanadium pentoxide absorption of so3 in sulfuric acid to give oleum that is h2h2o7 they just in NCT is just mentioned or uh, it's just mentioned in these three steps and they didn't explain this in detail but this diagram which i'll explain you within some time explains all in detail so to produce is purified by removing dust and other impurities such as arsenic compounds key step is manufacture of sulfuric acid is catalytic oxidation of sulfur dioxide with o2 to give so3 in presence of vanadium pentoxide catalyst and this is the reaction to so2 gases plus o2 gases in presence of vanadium pentoxide gives to so3 gases and delta r h0 is minus 196 kilojoule per mole now let me explain this okay what happens in contact process is that this is sulfur burner and these are all sulfur and when air is passed what happens is that yeah, sulfur gets burnt and here impure so2 plus o2 goes to dust precipitator and this is uh, this is washing and cooling tower here all the waste water comes out and because water spray is added impure so2 and o2 passes now next what happens is that uh, here concentrated h2 sulfuric acid is sprayed so waste acid comes out it's also known as drying tower and here dry so2 plus o2 is passed to this that is arsenic purif arsenic purifier containing gelatinous hydrated ferric oxide and this is preheater and preheater is passed to this that is catalytic converter where vanadium pentoxide is present which is a catalyst and so3 gas is finally passed to last one and your concentrated sulfuric acid is passed to quartz and here at last oleum h2h2o7 is formed and from that as you know sulfur dioxide is manufactured now let us move okay note f2 is strongest oxidizing halogen fluorine the activity of halogens towards other halogens halogens combine amongst themselves to form number of compounds and is known as interhalogens of the type xx dash xx3 dash xx5 dash and xx7 where x is larger size halogen and x dash is smaller size halogen now chlorine preparation of chlorine or uh, not chlorine reaction of chlorine okay 2 naoh which is cold and dilute plus cl2 gives nacl plus nao cl plus h2o and 6 naoh that is hot and concentrated plus 3 cl2 gives 5 nacl plus naclo3 plus 3 h2o now let's study about interhalogen compounds xx dash 3 oh uh, these are all the compounds and all of them are bent shaped and uh, that is clf3 brf3 if3 icl3 
x x dash phi all are square pyramid middle that is i f phi b r f phi c l f phi x x dash 7 that is i f 7 is pentagonal and bipyramidal now let us study the last topic which is xenon fluoride compounds here you can see these are xenon fluoride compounds and this x with 3 x xenon with 3 lone pairs and 2 fluoride gives x fe2 structure which is linear and x fe4 this is a structure gives square planar and this x fe6 this is structure which is distorted octahedral and this is x e o f4 which is square pyramidal and this is structure and f uh, x e o3 which is pyramidal and this is structure thank you okay guys if you like my video do hit the bell icon and subscribe button so that you will be notified with all upcoming videos which is fully free and enjoy unlimited lectures thank you